Hey guys, what's up? Let me draw your attention for a little bit. Um, today we're gonna go over how to draw a Triceratops. I'm using this, uh, it's Faber-Castell P-I-T-T artist pen. It's a thin one and it comes in a set. It's essentially like, you know, like a thin, thin marker or let's just say like a thick pen. Uh, has like a brush pen on it. Uh, but anyways, we're gonna go through it for beginners. So follow along and, or you can just kind of watch and we can go over certain structural things. So uh, I'm gonna go over this in layers as well. So pay attention and let's get going. So I'm gonna go over this in layers, right? I'm gonna start with a thick layer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this paper, which is regular printing paper, by the way, 11 and a half, wait, eight and a half by 11 uh, printing paper, totally regular. So I'm gonna draw the structure of it and then I'm gonna put the paper underneath and we'll go over that. So right now, if I'm thinking of a tracer toast, I'm gonna think of the front of the face as almost like a coffin shape, almost like a, I don't know, like a, like a squished triangle. And the peaks right here are gonna be where the eyes are gonna be. Pull back. And that's kind of the portion of it that, that recedes into the crest. And I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. I'm gonna pull down right here, thinking of this like screwed up box. And a bit of a beak shape. So I'm thinking in simple forms. The reason you think in simple forms is because it's always gonna have some sort of weight, some sort of gravitas to it, and your drawing is gonna feel like that. So start thinking of it within like blocky forms first. Um, and it will simplify things for you later. You can throw detail on there without having the entire picture fall apart on you because that can totally happen when, you, um, when you're when you too, uh, I'm gonna throw a spike on there by the way. Uh, it can totally happen when you are, uh, and the spikes can be toward the top. Uh, what was I talking about, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so when you're going into details first only, uh, or like first and doing that, if you're not ready for it, it can fall apart and the whole thing will look like mush. It'll look like a lot of details on top of nothing. Um, you need a structural base in order to keep that stuff, uh, you know, again, from falling apart. Uh, and, and like that structural, and if you had nothing else, that structural base is what will save the drawing. Uh, because at least things are in the right position. You know, we're always talking about placement as well. So let's pull back. Go in here. We're gonna have that kind of like go into the side of the cheek and pull back into the face a bit. And we're gonna have that round crest around the back here. And I want the eye to be roughly here. Eye is usually uh, below the horn. I think that eye is probably not even gonna be visible. It's gonna be facing the outside. So Triceratops was uh, an om uh, omniv um sorry not omnivore um herbivore. So herbivores tend to have, uh, even currently, they tend to have their eyes placed on the right sides of their head so they can survey their uh, kind of surroundings. Uh, they kind of just evolved that way because they're hunted by predators. Um, this thing pr probably take care of itself really well though. Um, throw a horn at the front. So a lot of it, the horn shapes are really simplistic. They're very uh, just coney, long cones, I'm thinking cones. Again, constantly thinking in simple shapes, as you can tell the way my mind works. Uh, pulling up a little bit here. And that's pretty much it for this. Uh, we can draw the neck that it's on. I know the back of the neck was on a swivel, I believe, that, that dinosaur, based on its bones. I'm just gonna throw a neck on there. So we're just doing the head. So what I'm gonna do right here with a simplistic, simplistic outline is I'm going to, actually one more thing. I'm gonna draw some kind of lines showing the rivets on this. Just, I'm gonna pull this down a little bit. So you do little fixtures here on this layer, so that you don't have to do it after that. You don't have to do it in the. You don't have to do it in the, the point where you're really going to the final. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another sheet of paper. Hold on, flick. Another sheet of paper. Put it over. I don't know how it looks like on camera, but currently I can vaguely see this, right? And this is regular paper, because I, okay, I want to say that now, because I constantly get comments where there, uh, people are saying, oh, but you're using tracing paper, and blah, 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 like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm using normal paper, completely normal printing paper. You can get it in a giant ream. I might even link it below, I might not, we'll see. Um, so then I'm gonna go in, and I'm gonna go in, kind of this is my permanent layer. 
And I'm gonna start with the eye, because I tend to do that. And even as I'm drawing this eye, I feel a little bit more of a safety because I have like my structure down. Like I have my where things will be placed kind of down so I can just think about the structure. I, I can just think about like details without having to think about it. So if I was to th um, think of one way to say that would be you have to think in stages. That's obviously not my line, but you think in stages. So you don't have to, it's not overwhelming at once. I'm gonna draw the horn. And throw maybe a little curve on it. You know, a lot of them kind of curve forward. I can throw detail on that horn, maybe some lines. Excuse my computer for making noises. Uh, putting a little bit of shadow here. Also, the side of the cheek tends to have a uh, kind of horn sticking out in the, in the cheekbone right here. That's going to be along this edge. I didn't draw that in, but you know, we can do it. We can do it right now. And that's going to go pull in here into the front, and then the front is going to have a bit of a beak. And I'll go over that in a second here. I'm going to go to the far side of the head gonna be that brow. The horn's gonna be really close to that. Sometimes they'll have versions where it's like literally on it. All right, kind of getting really close, uncomfortably close to the edge of that paper. Pulling down. And I'm gonna look at that horn. I'm also gonna make that horn angle down the front. Almost, almost rhinoceros looking type horn. I'm gonna angle that forward, because I think it has a cooler aesthetic to it, and there were some that had that, and, you know, uh, fossils. Pull down. It's gonna have a bit of a, like a beak. It has a beak in the front. Uh, I know when they found, I think was it this? I'm not totally sure. They thought it was a griffin. That's what the griffin came around. The griffin, you know, the uh, half lion, half bird, because they, they found the skeletons of this. And it looks like a griffin in the skeletal form. They didn't know what to make of it. Right there, a kind of a, I don't know, is it like apostrophe shape for the nasal, uh, for the, uh, you know, where to, the nostril. That's funny, I forgot the name of the nostril. And I'm gonna kind of separate the beak there a little bit. portion of the beak. Going down. I'm throwing in random details. Uh, you don't really, uh, you don't need to. But I kind of just want to. Pulling back. Lower jaw here. I'm not gonna make it fully connect because I want it to kind of come down here into the neck. Pulling back. I'm gonna make a shape for that crest. Press them, like, some form to it. And closing off the back of the neck here a little bit. So at this point, well, hold on actually. I'm gonna, I need it for the crest there. I'm gonna throw some small, actually, you know what, I'm gonna pull, I, I might pull this layer out from underneath. And what I'm gonna do now, now that I have to see this, I'm going to kind of go in with some of the shadows and where I want those to be. I want one right here.
going right here, I'm going to connect this uh, a little bit. A bit of a line showing like a change of form. Now, uh, now at this point, it's not even really about, I mean, it is about the structure. You can kind of take it in many different directions. What I could do is I could uh, maybe draw some scales on it, but that would take a long time. This is a demonstration. Uh, I could give indication of scales as I'm doing right now. shadow on the beak itself. And a little bit more shadow underneath the neck here to kind of ground the entire like as an image. And this is these are rules that go for any drawing, not just a drawing of of uh, this of a triceratops. Um, you tend to have your shadows downward because the light source tends to come from above. Uh, and so because of that, of that, you tend to have a lot more. And, and well, what the thing, if, you know, a lot more shadows, a lot of darker shapes. And those darker shapes ground that form. They ground the drawing. It makes it kind of, again, have some sort of uh, visual weight to it that a viewer can just kind of look at it who maybe doesn't know anything about drawing. And they'll be like, oh, okay, cool, that's what it is. It's easily readable. You know, many, many, many reasons why you do that. Uh, hopefully you guys are liking this. Uh, I do, uh, I wanna draw more dinosaurs on this channel, on Easy Drawings. Um, I recently, um, I'll talk as I'm trying to do these little ridges. Uh, and I'm just throwing little indication swooshes here. Like those little check marks are just indications of form, right? You're not drawing the entire you know, thing across, you're just, I'm indicating that there is that shape there. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, I'm combining uh, a lot of my YouTube channels, uh, uh, you know, marketing-wise. Uh, I'm changing a lot of the icons here, and I'm creating kind of a kind of a unified form. I have different YouTube channels for different purposes. They are all art-related. Uh, this one is really more geared toward. Uh, honestly, I want to I want to gear it toward comics and animals. Uh, but uh, we'll see about that. It just has like a little bit of a different flavor. There's easy things to draw. There's a Halloween channel, of course, the Christmas channel. Uh, there's another channel entirely dedicated to tattoo art that's a little bit different. There's a lot of flavors. Um, the other thing is make sure to go to uh, easythingstodraw.net. That is the official site. Uh, so go check that out. There are beginner lessons there. There, are, I believe I'm adding some printable uh, kind of documents there. and. Just kind of all around this uh, articles that'll lead you to a lot of cool like learning. Uh, like I said, I even have a program entirely, entirely dedicated to uh, complete, complete beginners. Like I mean, how to, you know, hold the pencil and stuff like that. Like really, really go, go to beginner lessons and you'll see that for someone who's like hardly ever drawn in their life, or maybe if you just want a more kind of grounded base on your drawing. But go check that out. Easy things to draw. Net. Dot net. That's that's a thing. Uh, I'll get that dot com soon, but dot net. But yeah, that helps me out. Sharing articles helps. Uh, you know, your feedback always helps. You know, commenting, any any of that stuff always helps me. Thank you so much for all the amazing backup and support you guys have given me over the years. And I want to reward you by like fixing the formats and stuff, putting more additional cool stuff on the channel, um, and giving you what you want. And I'm gonna try to make a product really soon. I've talked about it. It's a product entirely how to teach yourself. Um, so like the idea is that we're not, nobody's really self-taught, right? Uh, a lot of these things came from what? I mean, even back when Michelangelo and Leonardo were doing that, uh, Da Vinci, they were doing a lot of the same things we are. We're standing on the shoulders of giants, correct? And nobody's really self-taught, but I wanna put out a program, uh, and I am going to, about how to 
keep yourself on track without having to go to a gigantic art school. That's a big one. Like, do I have to go to an art school? You don't have to, but it's harder. And I want to give you that, all that info on like what exactly you need to do to keep yourself on track. Um, I'm going to give you all the pitfalls, just everything in a one hour long talk about what you need to do. And I'll probably give a printout with that as well. Um, so that you don't have to go to a giant art school. What, re how do you use those resources that are online? Because everything is online, but people are still not getting good for some reason. Why? You know, or they're not getting as good as they want to. Why? So that's what I really want to go over uh, in that program, and I think it's worth it. Uh, but yeah, that has not come out yet, by the way. <laughs> but uh, if you want to be put on the email list for that. Uh, just uh, let me know in the comments or except put your email in the com well I'll put a link below them and then uh, you can be added to that the, when it comes out I want it to come out within about a month but and don't worry about it I'll be announcing it like crazy here all right see we're adding little dashes see how it's coming to life a little bit more and more as you throw these little indications of form little indications you can kind of keep going on this you can draw every scale you have to be careful you could break it as well because it'll, sometimes there'll be so many lines where it'll like there isn't there's not there needs to be unification to it and you need to do something extra on top of that and I have seen that where like some of the scalier dinosaurs I've seen online where people draw they do kind of break the form a little so you have to be uh, very aware and very careful of that of not do that Anyways, that's it for a demonstration. That's Triceratops. I really, really hope you liked this. If you did, give me a, a thumbs up uh, and share the video if you learned something. If you learned something and you think a friend might like this, uh, share it. Uh, and that's pretty much it, guys. I'll uh, talk to you soon. One last announcement, right? Check out the uh, easythingstodraw.net. Check that site out. I'm going to put the link in the description. A lot of cool, amazing articles on there. And I'm going to try to add more and, uh, you know, make it amazing. Thank you so much, guys. I'll talk to you later.